coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next C++ SFML 2.0 tutorial. And in this tutorial we are going to be learning about pixel collision. Now the code is already done simply because there's going to be a lot that I have to explain. I don't feel like splitting this into two videos so uh, the code's already here. The source code is on my website if you'd like to download it and follow along that is up to you. Okay. Now, just to let you know right now, pixel do not use pixel collision unless you absolutely have to, unless you like literally have to, like it, it is essential to your game. If it is not essential or it won't make a big difference, do not use it. The reason why is because it requires a lot of work on the hardware. Some aspects of your game could slow down, could be kind of laggy uh, because it requires so much, right? And um, so don't use it unless you absolutely have to. So let's get started. So what we're go in our in our player class, we have our rectangle. I took this base code from the um, the bounding box collision. We have our bottom left, right, and up. Now I've created a vector um, that a two dimensional vector that takes in boolean variables. So in here we have our constructor and it takes in the position, the size, the color like it did before and we set the uh, default values. Now in here we're going to set an image, a render texture and a texture. Now I never told you, I never taught you about render textures but think of render textures as um, the window, as another window that we draw to but instead of drawing it to a window we, we draw it to a, a specified texture. So we make a render texture and we have another texture. So we say our texture.create and we make it the size of a rectangle and we make a new rectangle shape called temp rect and we just set the position to zero. And then we draw that temp rect to our, our texture and we display that texture. Now what our texture.display will do is it, was, it will allow us to actually get the texture that's on the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to say texture is equal to our texture dot get texture. So we're going to get um, that uh, rectangle that we drew to our texture. And then we're going to set image equal to that. So basically all this process is doing is taking our rectangle and converting it into an image and uh, um, from the SF image class. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through the size of the image. So and then we're going to make a uh, so we're going to loop from zero to the, the width of the image and from zero to the height of the image. And right here we create a Boolean called temp mask. Now in this for loop, we say that if image dot get pixel IJ dot A is greater than zero. So this will check the alpha value of each pixel in our image. If the alpha value is greater than zero, then we're gonna put we're gonna push back the value true. If it is not greater than zero, which means it is equal to zero, that means it's false and that means it's a transparent pixel. After that um, we add that to our mask and we keep on looping until it's done. Our update remains the same. Uh, we don't have to look into that. Now our collision code is a bit different. So this part remains the same. And our else though, we make two. We make four new variables, right? Collision bottom, collision top, left, collision right. And um, collision bottom is a, the first of all. We have to include the algorithm class at the top to use these functions. And um, Call bottom collision bottom is equal to the minimum value between these two. Uh, the the top is equal to the max value of these two. The left is equal to the max value of these two, and the right is equal to the max value of these two. Now I'm going to show you what essentially is going on. So um, let's just draw a triangle right here, and let's draw another triangle. Um overlapping it okay so what we're gonna do is first we're going to do a bounding boss collision since pixel collision is hard on the hardware we don't want to keep on having we don't want to continuously check for pixel based collision 
there's no point unless they are overlapping in some way or some sort of, of another, right? Now, some images, like if we look at our sprite sheet, let me just open this um, up quickly. So if you notice our sprite sheet, uh, whenever we crop out our image, it crops out 32 pixels, right? But for these first few pixels, it's not actually, um, they're all transparent. But if we were to use bounding boss collision, what would happen is that as soon as this side of the sprite hit something, it would say it collided when it actually never really touched it. So this is a good scenario and when you want to, of when you'd want to use pixel uh, based collision, but I still wouldn't even advise it because it's very minuscule, but this is a good example of when you could use it. So um, what we would do is that we would check to see if this bounding box is um, overlapping somewhere else. Then we would check if any of these pixels are touching another pixel and then we do stuff with it. There's no point in checking for pixel collision if it's not touching another object. It just, it's just more work that the hardware doesn't need to do. So when we overlap this, what we're going to do is we're going to make a box or we're going to check for our, the rectangular area that is overlapping. So we're only going to check for this. Why are we going to check the pixels in all of these areas right here when they're not even a factor, right? We only want to check the overlapping pixels. We don't need to check the pixels in here. We don't need to check the pixels in here. We only need to check the pixels in the, in the area that has been collided, okay? So, um, if we go back to our code, um, we are going to... So what we what we do is that we say call bottom is equal to the minimum value between bottom and p and then the second player's bottom. So what does this mean? Um the minimum value so this is since this is farther down the screen and this is higher up the screen, it means that we our bottom is going to be this value right here. So that's going to be our bottom. Okay? And if we go back to our code, we see call top the, the maximum value between these two um, rectangles, okay? So let's go back to here. So this this top is greater, farther down on the screen than this top. So we know the top of the box is right here. So we got the top and we got the bottom. Now we need to look at the left. So the maximum value between um, the two left values, okay? So if we go back to our code, this left is farther right to the screen, which means it's a higher value than this left. So um, the colliding box, the left hand side is over here. And for the right hand side, it's a minimum value between these two. And since this side is farther left than this side over here, then we got that side. So getting that, we have just found um, the rectangle that is actually colliding. Now, um, after we get that area, what we want to do is just uh, set that we're looping from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right. And then we say mat, uh, we, whatever our variable was, j minus left, i minus top, and then we'll say and if p mask, j minus p dot left, and i minus p dot top. So if both of them are true, it means that their pixels are overlapping and therefore there is a collision. So how come I do J minus left and I minus top? Um, the reason is is this. So let's say that our collision is at um, pixel, um, let, let's say this is at pixel, this is at pixel 100, this is at pixel 110 or something like that, right? So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna get this value right here right now this value is pixel zero on this image right but on this image right here this would be uh if it's 20 pixels wide and this position is 110 and the x coordinate then this position on the image would be 10. so this would be uh pixel number 10. so we need to get the pixel number 10 in this image but pixel number zero in the second image and this is essentially what it's doing in here. So um, collision top would be 10, right? So I, let, let's say i is equal to 10 right now. 
and um, the top of our image is say um, at let's say that yeah the collision happens at pixel 110 and the top of our image is at position 10 so what's gonna happen is gonna say 110 subtract 100 will give us 10 so we should get this pixel at um, the 10th pixel within this image and I know that was like a poor explanation but I hope you guys actually understood that and what that's gonna do is that it's gonna get all the pixels within that image and then um, if both of them are true on a specified pixel it means that there's a collision else we're gonna return false and there's gonna be no collision at all so what I'm just going to do is because of my screen recorder, it's going to be laggy if I put it at a low value. So I'll just change this to 1. And let's run this. So when we touch it, you can see it says collision when we touch it. Now to show you that this works with um, other sprites as well, I'm going to pause it. I'm just going to add in some code and show you what I add in. So I've changed the code. And if we look at this, if it was bounding boss collision, it would have said that we would have been colliding right now. And I, I know it shows collision right now, but I, I was just doing some stuff before. But notice it's not adding, it's not saying collision anymore, right? But as soon as I move it a tick, it's still not even saying is it still it's still not even saying collision right so we haven't those pixels aren't touching it now as soon as I move it a little bit and the pixels are touching then it's just to say collision and as you can see that's how we handle a uh, pixel a uh, perfect collision and um, the code that I've changed I just changed it to take in a, a reference to a texture change the, uh, the image to uh, I say texture dot copy image and make it into an image set the position changed uh, everything from rec to player I'll add this in the source code as well so you guys can um, use both methods but uh, that is it for this tutorial hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching don't forget to comment rate, and subscribe and bye for now